What's up everybody? Welcome to my channel. I'm John and welcome to the segment which we started called What's on the Bench. Clearly this segment is about what is on my bench and what that is, what it's going to do. I don't know. What, what's on my bench? Um, parts, right? So we, uh, we take a look at what kind of parts I have in the shop. Basically, these are things that are waiting to go on the bike uh, that I haven't gotten around to installing yet. Uh, you know, because life and stuff, uh, it just uh, gets in the way sometimes. Yeah. You know? Anyways, um, so what's on the bench tonight? Um, Bell's two hearted. Still going with that. So what's on the bench tonight is some very exciting stuff for the Honda Monkey. Very exciting as in make you go fast exciting. This is such a cute little box. It's so small. Uh, you probably can't even see it. Well, here, here's some, some uh, perspective, right? That sword, I don't know. Tell me if I'm not using the right words. So look, it's, it's, not, even, it's not even as big as the beer can. So w can you guess what's inside? If, if it's driving you nuts, comment below. But I'm about to tell you anyways, so chill out. We have a piston from DHM. This is DHM's high compression. And I'm going to show this to you on the bench. Um, cameras on my face, uh, so it's not going to focus in on the piston. But we'll just give you a little, little display, a little sort of price is right display of it. Uh, this is a high compression piston, stock bore for the Honda Monkey, Honda Grom, soon to be Trail 125 maybe. So anyways, um, this piston is a high compression stock bore piston. Um, and what that means is you install this into a stock bore. So you use your OEM cylinder uh, and rod, you know, and um, basically just take out your stock piston, put this piston in, and you have more compression with just that change. What does more compression do for your motor? Compression, and I don't want to give a science class because I'm probably going to be wrong. So compression, let's make it simple. The more compression you have, the more potential for power you have to make. So the more air that your piston compresses into the combustion chamber when that spark fires the faster and harder that piston and rod assembly is going to fire back down all this equals more power what's that guy from don't let me to say more power baby so more power baby more power for the honda monkey with just a simple piston change piston changes might not sound simple but they are on the Honda Grom and the Honda Monkey, it's um, it's pretty easy business. So get you a factory manual, uh, do it the right way. The orientation of the piston rings is kind of important. Um, what's that? Oh, I don't know what that is. What is it? It's like a spacer. Why is there a spacer? You see that? Hmm. I'll show you what else came in this care package. Very importantly, a new flashed ECU for the Honda Monkey. So you might know of my ECU woes that I've had. Uh, if you haven't, there's probably about 45 minutes, close to an hour's worth of video covering that. Um, those are my darker days. I just talked and talked and talked and thought it was all very, very important for you to know. So I didn't edit it much and I just let it spill, let it run like a river, talked over and over and over, which I'm doing right now. So ECU, good to have. If you do mods like this, you got to have more fuel, got to have more air and your ECU has got to know what you're doing. So stock ECU, it can learn. 
a little bit of air, it can learn a little bit of exhaust. So if you put a pipe on, the stock ECU will learn, okay, I'm flowing a little bit better. Let me give it a little bit more fuel. Same thing with uh, an intake, air intake. A little bit more, it's getting heavy. So I, I gotta clear my mind. A little bit more air, put an air intake on, your ECU can adjust, give you a little bit more fuel. If you do exhaust and intake, ECU can't do it. Too much, too much air going in, too much air going out, not enough fuel. So your fuel mixture will run lean at that point. Lean as in not enough fuel. Rich means too much fuel. So you're probably not gonna get in a situation where you run too much fuel with these bikes, uh, especially because they're controlled by an ECU. Too much, too rich is a lot of carburetor things. You know, too rich ain't gonna happen too much on a monkey. If I'm wrong, comment below, tell me I'm wrong, because I, I know how you like to tell me when I'm wrong. It's fun, so just go ahead, tell me when I'm wrong, no big deal. Um, so he included this tuned and already flashed ECU. He already knows I have a man in the box M take. He already knows I have a Yoshi full exhaust. He knows that I have a high compression piston now. He knows I have a TB cam in there. So David Hugh is a man on the scene. He said, I'm gonna set this dude up with an ECU that's already tuned. Um, not to worry about it. It's good, man, all good. And because he's cool like that. He, you know, he also races the Woodsman Cup with us too. Um, so, and this is not just some dude that's, um, you know, out there doing something without knowing the bikes, right? So there's two guys out there, David Hugh and Cameron Jones. These are who I consider the go-to guys for Honda Grom and Honda Monkey ECU work. Um, both of these guys have helped me tremendously. Cameron Jones was clutch, um, literally clutch when it came to trying to figure out the ECU problem with the monkey because the clutch switch and the kickstand switch was actually what was causing that bike to cut out. Too long of a story, I can't go into it, but Cameron Jones helped me out a lot in trying to troubleshoot that and figure out what it was. David was the one who tuned the ECU originally, the ECU that had the glitch in it. it wasn't his, anything to do with him. It was the factory ECU and it had some issue with the kickstand circuit. So it's not even anything that he would have ever looked at when reflashing it. So that problem actually stuck in there when he reflashed it. Anyways, the, the problem stayed. So he jumped on board and said, let me, let me get that fixed for you. I'll wipe it clean. Um, and, uh, we'll, we'll get it reflashed, right? We'll get that problem out of there. He beat me to even that punch because I didn't even send him the other ECU, he sent me this whole package ready to go. So I'm pretty sure he can do the same for you. So you give him a shout, say, I saw this video on John 5XR's channel and I want that set up. Give me that set up. He'll hook you up, make you a package. Run DHM, right? So you're running David Hugh motoring, but it's like run DMC, pretty slick. Also included in this kit is the gaskets you need for the cylinder head and then cylinder. So this is a complete package and I need to do this on my bike because um, I want more power, baby, right? We all want more power. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but I want more power. Do y'all wanna take a closer look at this? Um, let me show you the fine details of this beautiful machinery. Let's go to the bench. So the first thing we're gonna focus on because it's gorgeous. It's just beautiful. Is this very nicely machined little combustor piston DHM. So that's intriguing to me. So this means David Hugh motoring DHM actually has these, these pistons produced and made to his specification because when you get a Wysico, it says Wysico doesn't say DHM. So I just happened to look over and see my friend over there smiling at me. Um, this is a piston from Lars's TTR 125, I think. Yeah. Anyways, um, similarly sized 125 cc piston, maybe a little bit bigger. 
definitely got a taller skirt. But what I'm going to show you to, and what I want you to focus on is the height. Look at the tops of these pistons. Do you see how this one's flat and concave? And this one is raised and domed? That's where your increase in compression is going to come from. So this dome is going to squeeze more air fuel mixture into the combustion chamber. And this dome is going to plunge further up into the cylinder head. And this is called quench. So this high dome piston is going to quench more fuel and air together at the top of that combustion chamber. And as we discussed before, more compression, more combustion when that spark happens equals more power, baby. So very nice. And you see it says in, that means intake. So this side is going to be up because the intake's on the top, exhaust is on the bottom. So it's going to be mounted that way and it's going to do stuff like that and make more power. I like saying, I think that's the funniest thing when that dude says more power, baby. It's just addicting. Wrist pin, this looks like probably Honda OEM packaged stuff because, oh, there that is again. What is that? And where does it go? Mystery. Mystery part. Voodoo. Voodoo. Probably not. It's probably a stupid, easy to understand thing that I just can't think of. And of course you have your piston rings here. Piston rings are very important. I'm not going to open these up because I don't want to lose them. But each piston ring typically has an edge on it. It has a bevel. So some piston rings will have a, an edge like that. Some piston rings will have two edges. Some will have different, yeah, lots of edges. I don't know. So you just want to make sure that you get those piston rings on the piston the proper way or else you won't get that compression. Things will not work right and you will be angry people. So I hope to do this soon, maybe tomorrow night. I don't know. Um, so that's what is included in that run DHM kit. So last night I filmed uh, my episode of what's on the bench with the DHM high compression stock bore piston kit. And I left out a couple of things, a couple of facts about this kit that I needed to revisit because I found the instruction paper today. So I was going to go do the install today and uh, realized that I was missing something very important, which is the NGK CR9E spark plug um, not included. So install the spark plug with the included aluminum spacer. That's what that spacer is for. Got it. Um, that makes that makes me happy. So anyways, the other facts on this paper are this piston will require at least 91 octane fuel. 93 is even better if it's available. I checked with David on this and he assured me that 93 E10 ethanol is the most powerful fuel that you're gonna get out of the pump for this bike. So I argued that I like using ethanol free, the 90 octane ethanol free. He said, yeah, it might work, might be okay, but just use 93 E10, it's better. Okay, he's got dyno time, he understands what he's doing, I'm gonna trust him on that. Uh, the other thing is, requires setting ring end gaps during installation, see product page for an installation video. So that's going to be important because uh, you might need to um, file down the ring end gaps and sometimes that requires a special tool. So we're going to check that out. Uh, and it says, do not install this piston without a fuel controller or ECU flash. Um, and then it has a bit about the A-Racer ECU if you have that. So this is kind of a requirement to uh, go to this kit. You're going to need to have more fuel. So just send it to DHM and have them um re reflash your ecu that's the easiest way that's about it so um also too uh this is kind of standard with the reflashed ecus after installing please perform an ecu and tps reset before your first ride the ecu will adapt over the course of the first 15 to 20 miles please try and vary throttle positions and rpms during this time after your first few miles you'll be Free to enjoy your added horsepower, torque, and rev limit. That's part of the process with the ECU flash. 
and I cover that in my ECU um, reflash ECU installation video and I have two other videos actually that cover those processes so just search my past videos for those so I hope you enjoyed that episode of what's on the bench hope you liked what was on the bench let me know in the comments uh, tell me tell me what you think good or bad so with that I'm gonna close it down and um, hopefully uh, the next one will be I, there's no way it's going to be as cool as a DHM high compression piston. So kind of ruining, you know, my, my best videos, I think, by doing that. Anyways, we'll try to make them fun, right? So see you next time. Thanks for watching.